sisters and brothers of Barbados. And let me mention in particular Caswell Franklin. Yeah. Caswell Franklin is the man that brought this NIS debacle to our attention on the Marseille Rick show. Yeah. And we have to give credit to her too for allowing us that platform to be able to speak to the people of Barbados. You are looking good, people. You are looking good. You're representing those who cannot march. There are over 30,000 people in the civil service that cannot march, who are affected, who will draw you in a corner and talk to you and tell you to keep doing what you are doing. There are those who will make a little donation to this movement because we are going back to the grassroots where everything started in Barbados. Where people would put their $20, their $30, a little $100 sometimes in order to make a movement work and to give it feet. People coming out and making their own posters. Not money that you get from a kickback that you could go to one of the big printing companies and get him posters print. We are making our posters ourselves. Those who wish to contribute, the ordinary people of Barbados are contributing. This is the right way to do it, right? because we are not beholden to a fella. There is nobody who can call you and tell you that if you don't stop marching, they're not going to fund the march anymore. We are funding it ourselves. We are making our posters ourselves. We are out here because we are asking the government we are telling the government that they have to be transparent in everything that they do. That is what a democracy is about. This here is not a, a, a partisan political event. If the DLP wins the government next time, you will still come out here and protest if you have an issue. If the DLP wins again and you have an issue, you come out and protest. That is what this movement is about. Every issue that you have, you have a voice. You will come out here and speak. This is not about any partisan politics. But what I want to say to you is that you have to ask them some questions. You have to make them accountable. What is happening with the NIS? What is happening with the NIS? And I, I think that everybody doesn't know the story. People hear a little talk about Four Seasons, and they hear a little talk about how law firms get money out of the Four Seasons, and how some construction magnets, the big boys get things too. The big boys get things out of Four Seasons too. So we're not only talking about the politicians, we're talking about the people in the private sector that benefit from that NIS money too. We talking about them too. But some of the things that you don't realize is that they take that money out of the NIS and put it in a special purpose vehicle. So when, when, the, when the Prime Minister says, oh, that person should know better, that person should know better. She should know very well that there are guidelines for the NIS. The truth is none of the guidelines were followed when that money was put into Four Seasons. It could not be because it was a failing project at the time. How could you take pension money and put it in a failing project to rescue the project? That's what, what NIS money is for. NIS money is not to bail out private sector projects. And that is what was done with your money. And then when you told her, because the media to their credit, I heard one of the members of the media asking her about recapitalizing the fund. 
Because Anthony Wood came out and said the government can recapitalize the NIS fund, take the burden off of the backs of the poor people. They can recapitalize it over a period of time. And you know what the Prime Minister said? Where the money going to come from? But let me tell you where the money is. The special purpose vehicle called Clearwater Bay Limited. Over $120 million was borrowed to put into Clearwater. $120 million. Barbadian, every resident here got a little piece of that hundred and twenty million dollars. And they borrowed it. And, and it is not just me saying this, it is the Auditor General. The Auditor General of Barbados says that it looks as though there was a mortgage over the property at Paradise. Clearwater Bay that the government set up. And then the bank called back for the money. The $120 million that was left. The bank called back for the money. The government find the money because there was a loan guarantee and pay back the bank. Now you know what the government was supposed to do next? The government was supposed to get back the money out of the Paradise Project by hook, not by crook. It was to get it back by hook. And it did not do that. So the Auditor General says that in 2018, I don't know if you know what is significant about 2018. But in 2018, the $120 million was written off. Written off. The Minister of Finance of 2018 decided that you, the people of Barbados, did not want your $120 million. You did not want your $120 million to buy better equipment for the police. You didn't want $120 million to buy for the copiers for the schools. You didn't want $120 million to buy more equipment for the hospital because you know sometimes you could go to the hospital and they would tell you that the equipment they're working so whatever like specific problem you have and the equipment ain't working you can't get it but the minister of finance wrote off a hundred and twenty million
as to how much money that is. That our government just decide that we don't want it no more. 120 million. So, when they ask you where to get the money from, say that we still got 120 million dollars there as a receivable that she can still collect, that the government can still collect. You know what the Auditor General said? The Auditor General said that he don't understand what the relationship was between the Clearwater Bay Limited and the developers of the property. So all like now, we don't know who owned the land at Paradise. We don't know who owned the land at Paradise, but your $120 million in 2018, the Minister of Finance decided to just write it off. That you don't want it. $120 million. And I, I, I don't want you to forget. I don't want you to forget that $120 million that was remarked. The property at Paradise could have been sold, but I understand from the Auditor General's report that the, the property at Paradise was sold to a company. But we don't know who the company is, we don't know who the company belongs to. And all I know, all that they're telling us is that it tie up in court, in legal wranglings. Who that can happen with a government, with a permanent secretary, with a director of finance, with a governor of the central bank? And we don't know what's happening with $120 million. So we want accountability, people. We want accountability. We want accountability. And we want transparency. Imagine the government told you that every year, $80 million is going to be sent overseas. $80 million sent overseas to invest. But you know what they tell you who invests in the money? They tell you where they invest in the money. They tell you what they invest in. You know, and, and I say to myself, but since they ain't telling us what they are investing in, they could invest in the same special purpose vehicle. And next thing you know, the money back here. Because there are certain people in government who seem to have a personal interest in whether or not Haya is ever built in Barbados. There seems to be a personal interest. And this is why we're talking about transparency. Because we know that government can take land for a public purpose. You know that when they build the highway, sometimes they just cut off the senior land. And they will tell you that they will give you a little compensation for it. Or sometimes they will build a guard wall instead. So you can acquire property for a public purpose but the Hyatt Hotel is not a public purpose that is a private sector project so why the great interest why the great interest in Hyatt that you would go and take property that belongs to a Barbadian you take it from them. Up to now, you ain't paid them for it. So that the people who build in Hyatt can have the land they want. So when they want money now, what is going to happen? Now, you remember that when the budget speech was given in 2022, the Prime Minister on that day in 2022 said the NIS would be made available for private sector projects that need support would be able to go to the NIS. That's what was said. 
So which private sector projects are talking about? I don't think we will go about with Four Seasons. Which hotel project is going to go to the NIS next? Now I know that they look at that money and they feel that that is enough money. But that is a, a lot of money for 280,000 people. It isn't. And all of us want our pensions. Even this little girl that here marching, she don't know. She don't know. But she can want her pension too. She, she can want her pension 50 years from now. And we are here marching for the children in primary school that don't know that they're going to want a pension. That's why we're here marching, not for only for ourselves, but for them too. So, Casper will tell you that that bill which they passed has a major error in it to change board to, to change the board to the state. Who is the state? The state is the cabinet of Barbados and the chairman of the cabinet. That is the executive. That is the executive of Barbados. And they're the ones then, if that bill is not changed, that will be looking after your NIS. And when we started this march, we sent the message loud and clear to the politicians to pull back that bill. Pull 